dancing is allowed. Dancing is allowed. And encouraged. Hello, everyone. Uh, today is a beautiful day in Door County. This is Dennis Conley, your den at the door, with our producer, Larry, Laddie Chapman. We're in a beautiful part of uh, Door County, enjoying a Door County uh, autumn day, one of those perfect autumn days when visitors come here and say to themselves, why be anywhere else? As, as mentioned, we're in that wonderful, magical town of Sister Bay, enjoying their fall festival. The fall festival is made up of food, friends, frolic, and uh, we're gonna see many attractions here today. Uh, the day is October 16th. It's, uh, it's a magical, brisk day. It's, going, it's proving to be a warm, sunny day. And uh, let's go look at some of the uh, attractions here at the Fall Festival. Take a little trip, take a little trip, take a little trip to see. Take a little trip, take a little trip, take a little trip to see. Some of, the, some of the folks are setting up for this food extravaganza. We have a collection of Nesco's that probably uh, is the envy of all Nesco collectors. I see all different models from all different years, various enamel configurations, pot lids being gently lifted for the beauty. We have a, a Vanna Woodby behind us, a, a veritable food Vannas showing us, uh, and, and, and your name, a lady. Lindley. Lindley. It's a lovely name. And Inga. Inga, of course it is. And uh, you're, you're doing any uh, boiled dinners? No, no boiled dinners today. All right. And your name? Angie. Angie. And Angie, what are you serving, Angie? Biscuits and gravy for breakfast, the breakfast of champions. And especially if you're from the south or the southern part of uh, Sister Bay, you do like the biscuits and gravy. Uh, your menu is very, very diverse. I've not seen a menu this diverse uh, at a uh, at a at a town festival before. Um, how did I know this deli is noted for its fine food and uh, diverse offerings? How ha did you come up uh, uh, with all these menu choices? That would be the man in the kitchen, Boyd, and I. I don't have anything to do with the cooking. I just serve it, and it's the best. You just food. serve it and give us uh, the uh, the benefit of your uh, of your uh, servitude, so to speak. Yes, that's my job. Make people smile. Yeah, you, you're doing a good job at thank that, you. and thank you. We're continuing down the street at this street festival, and we've come across uh, the Hat family. Uh, the gentleman with hats, another one emerged uh, as I was speaking, and we have a fine collection of hats. Uh, gentlemen, uh, how are you connected? Family. My father-in-law, brother-in-law, my stepfather. And uh, are you the Hatfields? <laughs> sure. Today we are. Yeah, today you are. Yeah. Tell us about the hats and uh, how this tradition started. He's the boss. He made well, I, I started mine about uh, probably about 15 years ago. I started mine and I made it. I had a hat I was going to, okay, hats were going to throw out, but I told my wife, no, I'm going to make a crazy one for the fall festival. And what did you do with that? Why are you wearing such a sane one today? But, but this, this is it. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy. It's just absolutely nuts. That, uh, they tell me I'm crazy, so it's good. But no, it helps, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. It certainly does. So I made this one, and then I made uh, this one? for a friend of mine, and then I gave it to, we gave it to Wayne. Fish made that in 2000. Ah, and he's still your friend. He's still my friend. It's a it's a good friend to have. And and, uh, and then I came along in the family, and I, he says, "Oh, you need a hat." Oh, here I am. And and here you are with a hat. And uh, uh, I see this is depicting the Sister Bay Bowl, uh, uh, an institution here in Sister. Bay. And I get no freebies off of them. Uh, I hope you do. I hope. Uh, <laughs> 
I hope that pin setter uh, maybe kicks over the seven pin for us. Yeah, the seven ten split there. Yes. Ten, yeah, indeed. And your hat? Uh, my hat is Hoosby's. We got ours about the same time. Ah. He married one daughter. I married the other one. So we kind of married into that. And uh, that's yeah. right. So you're spreading the happiness of your hat culture throughout the. Hoosby's is the best hat. Absolutely, and great food at both places as it well. Is. It is. Great, great. And uh, so during the whole day, you're keeping these hats and kind of circulating the joy with other people. I see you have a collection of beads. Yeah, I just, I kind of started that, oh, that was three, four, three, years, four years ago. We met uh, one of the liquor promoters. She was making her rounds, and she was passing out a bunch of them. She gave them a bunch of us, and... I just kind of started with that. This so, year I'm throwing beads. So this is sort of an autumnal New Orleans Mardi Gras sort of feel that you're bringing to this. Trying to, you know, we're you're all doing a good job. Yeah. I'm trying. Yeah. And uh, we, we just met some other great folks. And your name, ma'am? Rhonda. Rhonda. And you're? Jacob. Jacob. And hi, sweetie. What's your name? Tessa. Tessa. I love that Tessa. Where are you folks from? Kenosha. Kenosha. Love Kenosha. I'm originally from there. Um, and uh, we welcome you here to Sturgeon Bay. Did you come particularly for this event? Yes, we did. Excellent. Come every year. Every year. As Would you recommend to the other people in Kenosha to come here every year? Definitely. definitely. So what are the high points besides the beautiful nature of uh, Door County and the warmness of the people and the great food. What other great events do you like with this event? We love the parade and we love the Bloody Marys. Ah, of course. <laughs> and we're here at a beautiful aspect of the Sister Bay Festival and we're at the car show. We're enthusiastic. <laughs> Let's try again. How's that? <laughs> And we're, we're here again at a beautiful aspect of the Sister Bay Fall Festival, the car show. And we're th enthusiasts from around uh, Dora County and around the Midwest have gathered with their beautiful machines to share them with the rest of us so that uh, we can enjoy their, their artistic work and their, their love of this wonderful machinery. And I'm here with one of the coordinators of this event. Your name, sir? Uh, Tom Sadler with the Sister Bay Lions Club. Very good, and I understand the Lions Club is the mm. instrumental main thrust of this event? Yes, it was. This is our 12th year that we've had sponsored the uh, Classic Car Show. And it's and the reason for it is it's used as a fundraiser for all of our Lion activities. Folks, uh, are, the emission is by donation, and those donations then are used to support many uh, different events in the community throughout the year. Can you delineate just a couple of those uh, events that the Lions are so involved with for the community? Well, up here in northern Door County, uh, we're involved with uh, sponsoring uh, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts. Uh, there are some youth sporting events. Uh, the uh, then on the lion side of the thing, we uh, send funds into Camp Rothschild, which is for uh, a camp in the middle part of Wisconsin. And it's for the uh, handicapped youth so that they can have a freedom of a camp experience. Uh, we also support Leader Dog and Puppy uh, Program, which is, for our, uh, which is the blind part of our activities. And without, without the activities of lions and the people like the lions, our, our lives and the lives of the special needs and regular kids here in uh, Door County and throughout the state would not be as enhanced it is, as it is. So we really appreciate the work you're doing. Yes, and, and we, you know, we all enjoy doing the work. You know, it, as our motto, it's uh, we work hard to raise funds to, to be of service to others in need. Well, you're, you're a good example of that. And this is just one example of what the Lions do and uh, some of the other clubs do. And we're going to take a short tour of this, uh, of this uh, 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 beautiful car exhibit here. And uh, would you like to lead us through a little bit of this? Or? Sure. Uh, one of the things I would like to add is that without the car owners, you know, our fundraiser would not be able to go. So it's those people that have the vehicles that are willing to come here and, and spend a, a day or two with us to allow 
that to be shown that allows us to raise funds. So it's all interconnected. Right. And uh, a great group of enthusiasts I see before us with a wide variety of vehicles. So let's take a walk, George. We're with one of the uh, enthusiasts and car owners, uh, and uh, uh, your name, sir? Barney Sulin. Barney, uh, can you, uh, where are you from, Barney? Uh, Milwaukee, we have a place up here near Bailey's Harbor. It was a trick question, and you handled it really well. Uh, can you tell me about your vehicle? Well, it's a 34 Ford. Uh, it's, all, it's all Ford. It's got a new Mustang engine. Uh, Ford rear end, Ford transmission, air conditioning, automatic, CD player. So it's got all the amenities, tilt wheel, power windows. It has all the amenities, but the body is still... Uh, and the suspension? It's got a Mustang front end and uh, a coil over rear end. What do you think uh, Henry Ford would be saying about this car if he were with us today? He'd like that I kept it uh, looking original Ford, and he'd like the uh, his wife's emblem there for the uh, hood ornament. So. Oh, is that right? She, uh, she his designed it? or gray, His wife had greyhound dogs. So that oh, I see. What a great connection. What a beautiful machine and what, uh, what a fastidious, incredible work. How much work have you done personally and how much have you uh, contracted out? Well, originally it was built by a guy in Pennsylvania, an old timer, and his claim to fame was if he built the Ford, it was all Ford. If he built the Pontiac, it was all Pontiac, instead of throwing a smaller Chevy engine or something. And then he passed away. He was an elderly guy, and he passed away. And, and uh, we heard about it. Another fella and I heard about it. He bought it first, and I bought it from him. So it was about probably 70, 60 to 70 percent completed by the old timer in Pennsylvania, and then we finished it up. Well, what a great story, what a great continuum of uh, enthusiasm. You've, uh, you've got a beautiful machine, you've obviously got great pride, and I appreciate you coming here to Sister Bay. Thank you. Sure, thank Thanks, you. Barney. And we're at another uh, fine example of a beautiful, beautiful, rare car here. Um, and the uh, proud owner and, and father of this car is, is with me. Your name, sir? Jack Bunda. Jack, what a what a thank you for welcoming us into this beautiful world that you have here. Uh, your vehicle, how would you describe it? <clears throat> well, it's it's a rare Ford. Uh, in '46, they introduced this car after World War II, uh, with the wood on the side, and it's called a Sportsman. It's a woody convertible, which is, <laughs> you know, was extremely rare. Extremely rare. Chrysler came out to town and country, so Ford had this is their answer to Chrysler. And uh, there were very few built, and there's less than 100 remaining today. My goodness. So I, I found this one uh, down in Florida, and it was, uh, it was really uh, very bad shape, and we completely rebuilt the car. What woods are used on this jack? This is maple here, maple and mahogany. And did you find a good cabinet maker, or did you do some of the woodwork yourself? No, I found a, uh, a boat builder, actually, oh. and a very good uh, man. And he uh, took him a solid year certainly, to build this body. And um, the trunk alone was pushing four months just to do that. Um, is, is the subframe of this wood also, or is a steel subframe with this with these wood applications? It has a somewhat, it has a wood frame, or a steel frame behind the door, just a, a skeleton frame, you know, and the same behind here. But this is all just solid wood. My goodness. Yeah, so what special care uh, do you have to give this particular car more than you would a, a, a solid body steel car? Well, uh, the sun is the biggest worry you know, uh, with varnish, of course. Uh -huh. It's like a varnish boat, uh -huh. you know. And uh, and with a collector car, they're not exposed that much. But you wouldn't uh, use like a dishwashing soap to wash the car, let's say. You wouldn't do it on any car, but you, or it'll take the finish, you know. You've got to preserve that 
that, uh, that finish. Yes. Is that is that a polyurethane or hand rub? No. This is all original stuff. Oh my goodness. Yes. We went back to the original, <laughs> and it does work. Oh, it's know. it's totally. So when they built these, they were totally for aesthetics. Uh, uh, for the appearance, or was there a concern of shortness of steel originally, or? I think there might have been a little concern on, on the uh, shortness of steel, but I don't think that was the main reason. I think that was kind of a cop-out, and uh, I think they were just after Chrysler Motor yeah, Company. Yeah. And uh, But it was the highest price Ford you could buy. Certainly. And uh, there was one here in town when I was a kid back in 40, uh, I think it was 47. Um, and uh, that's where I first saw a sportsman, and it was really Jack. This is uh, this is a eye treat for all of us who uh, who uh, can appreciate a bit of the work that goes into classic cars and uh, collector cars. Um, and this is re probably one of the highlights of this entire collection and show. Uh, and we're just privileged to be able to talk to you. You're so welcome. Thank you. You're so Thank welcome. You. Would And we're continuing around this auto show, uh, looking at other fine examples of uh, what what these uh, car owners have done uh, to preserve and enhance these beautiful vehicles. And we're with another owner. Your name, sir? Steve Stone. Steve, where are you from, sir? Well, I live in Madison, in Wisconsin Excellent. these days. Excellent. Well, thank you for venturing here with this beautiful piece. Uh, it's a Stingray. It's a what year, sir? 63, the first year of the Stingray. Wonderful. A wonderful body shape. Um, and tell us a bit why this is a particular uh, love of yours. Well, it's, a first, it's my only Corvette. I bought it when I was 18 years old. My goodness. Uh, you were the dude, right? Yeah, well, oh. Dad co-signed for it with Mom's approval because I was 18 and needed to have somebody sign on the note. So. Oh, my goodness. And, uh, I've kept it all these years. Uh, I tried to sell it in 65 when I got drafted, and, and it didn't sell, so I kept it. Wow. Well, thank you for keeping it and sharing it with us. Um, what have you had to do to preserve and or enhance it to the state that we're looking at right now? Well, we're running a, a newer 350. This 350 engine went in uh, four years ago. It's got uh, 400 horsepower. It's, it gets up and goes. It's a no lead engine. I put disc brakes under it in the 70s. I like side pipes and headers, so I've done all that. And I run an electric, electronic ignition, MSD ignition on it. We drive it all over. We have uh, 456,000 miles on this car right now. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. With the early Corvettes of, I believe, this era, wasn't there some subframe concerns, some corrosion concerns? Is that a concern on this model? Not anymore. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, it uh, rusted and broke, actually, in 1981. The frame did back in the dog legs in, in the back there where the trailing member is. And my four sons and I took this car clear down to the bare frame and had it repaired. And... And then we put it all back together again, and now we have it wow. so it can run down. Well, thanks to people like you, and you particularly, for bringing us a great example and sharing it with all of us to appreciate. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Jerry, yes. Nice yes. to meet you, Dennis. Uh, Volo. Are you no, I just, I was uh, given a gift from Oh, that was nice. Volo Auto Museum. And, uh... We're here at another example, a beautiful, sleek, I dare not touch it, 58 Chevy. Make it look nicer All for right, you. Perfect. <laughs> and I'm here with the owner, the enthusiastic owner. Your name, sir? Jerry Sizek. Jerry, where are you from? I'm from uh, Glen Ellen, but we live in Bailey's Harbor. Excellent. Well, I really appreciate, we all appreciate you bringing this beautiful vehicle, this example of uh, exuberant styling and opulence that occurred in the, at this time in America. Uh, can you describe the uniqueness of this vehicle to us? Well, Dennis, this was a one-year body style with, uh, with Chevrolet. If you remember, 55, 56, 57 were all pretty much the same, and 58... <clears throat> Excuse me, they went to a radical different body style and only had it for one year. A lot of little examples on the car, too, because of the uh, influence of air technology. If you look at the, the turn signals, they kind of re uh, resemble the um, B-52 engines. <laughs> and the sides with the, the kind of the, uh, the, the rocket propulsion type thing. But the unique thing about this car was the first year that uh, Chevrolet uh, offered an Impala. And it was a model of the Bel Air. It wasn't even its own body style yet until 59. 
and it was unique too in that this one has turbo glide transmission which a lot of people say I should get rid of but it's a numbers matching car with a 348 cubic inch engine and it's just it's just a dream it really is a dream I just you know the aerodynamics of it I mean when you look at the back of the car the hood scoop on the back of the roof uh, it's really kind of neat and and, um, and and the weight ratio for the engine and the smoothness of your ride is uh, is beyond description today. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting because driving it over from Bailey's Harbor, it, was, it really handles well on the road. Yeah. It, it, I don't want to go around the corners as fast as we do it, it with the modern tires and suspension, but it handles very well. It really does. Well, uh, what, being a, such a Chevy enthusiast and uh, knowledgeable uh, person, why do you think they departed from this, uh, from this body style um, and, and you described it as unique for that year. Why, why do you think they did that? Well, 58 was also a tough year for auto sales all over. It was the end of a rece recession, and nobody did very well. None of the manufacturers did, did extremely well. But this car had what was called an X-frame. And the stock car racers didn't like it. They couldn't modify it uh, for the, for the sure, tracks. Because, sure. you know, you had Oldsmobile yeah, and yeah, Pontiac yeah, yeah, and yeah, Chevrolet yeah. and Chrysler and Dodge and yeah. Ford and Pontiac all racing and they just rejected you know this this, this uh this this frame so 59 they went back to Certainly. a regular frame that the Certainly. nascar driver got win on sunday sell on monday jerry beautiful piece and uh there's no end to the chrome polishing you can do with this car so uh <laughs> we really appreciate you sharing it with us dennis thank you, thank you very much i'm thank glad you enjoy the car oh wow Wonderful. A gentleman with a beautiful English example, an Austin Healy, and your name, sir? Uh, my name is Keith Kaysen. Keith, where are you from? Actually, I live in summers up here and then uh, winter in Winter Park, Florida. Wonderful. And we're about to be hit by oh, another right. uh, an Aston Martin, which has carefully avoided us. Um, tell us about this Healy. Well, this is a 1954 100-4 Austin Healy. Uh, what makes this car a little more special than most is it has a Le Mans kit, which was a special adaptation to make it go a little faster. Uh, 90 horsepower engine. And at the time, I think this was probably the least expensive car on the market that could go 100 miles an hour. No kidding. Yeah. And, and the styling is timeless. It really is. And I, I read somewhere, and I wish I could remember all the details, but recently there was a contest about the 100 best designs of everything, yeah. you know, toasters yeah. to cars, everything. And this car won one of those 100 Probably spots. XKE and this were I don't know, right I don't up know there. What they yeah, all were. yeah, yeah. What is the difference between this and the 300? A 3000, you mean? 3000. Okay, 3000 is a six cylinder engine and uh, it has a little different look to it, it has a little scoop on the, on the bonnet. And the other thing for the, the purists way back when was that it had roll up windows and that was thought as adding a lot of extra weight and so it was kind of like. Oh my goodness, what's next? Air conditioning. Yeah, yeah, oh, let's ho hope not, not for an English driver. Uh, and how long have you had it? I bought this um, just the uh, in spring, actually, and had it delivered up here. My and uh, I was thinking of taking it down to Orlando, Florida, but I think it's going to be a Door County car forever. Excellent. Well, thanks for bringing it to Door County and sharing it with us and right. sharing your enthusiasm. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> We're continuing around this collection of beautiful vehicles, and uh, I think being Wisconsin, it's time to interview a truck owner. Uh, this is the first truck we're going to be seeing today at this show. Your name, sir? Lyle Lundquist. Hi, Lyle, and where are you from, please? Sister Bay. Sister Bay. So this is a native truck that we should be able to see around here once in a while. It is, and uh, the truck came from Chambers Island. No kidding. What was it used for there? I'm not sure. I found, I found it in the woods. Uh, oh. Probably had been there about 30 years. Oh my good! Did you photograph the site as a, sort of a memory? Uh, I did, but I don't have any of the pictures along. Yes. So tell us about this. It's a 47 Ford, and what, what makes it particularly unique? Uh, 
the biggest thing that makes it unique is it came off of Chambers Island, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and it was in really bad shape. I uh, worked on it for five years oh. and completely restored it to original shape. My goodness. Did you so, do mo a lot of the work yourself, sir? Yes, I did 99% uh, of it. Well, that, that's a hobby that keeps you out of, your, out, of, out of trouble at home, right? It does, yeah. yeah or maybe get you in some. Uh, <laughs> did you have to replace the engine? Uh, no, it's the original engine that came out of it. My goodness. Um, w did Ford do anything particularly unique or different uh, in 47 being a post-war time? Did, what kind of changes did they make from the previous models? Well, uh, the chrome that you see on the truck wasn't chrome. Uh, everything was painted. And I, I think uh, that was because it was right after the war. Sure. And uh, availability of minerals. Right. Yeah. yeah. But then Detroit certainly made up for that in uh, subsequent years. Right. Yeah. They did. Yeah. Wow. And what kind of horsepower does this truck have? It has a hundred horse V8. Uh, I completely uh, redid the engine. Wonderful. So. So a daily runner for you. Yeah, it does. Uh, Sunday's on a nice day. Yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> Thank you for sharing this with us. Okay. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, looking at a lot of different pictures. We're at another great example, a Chevy Deluxe, a 1951 uh, inline six, uh, owned by uh, this gentleman has been so kind to guide us through the show, uh, Tom Sadler. Uh, Tom, tell us about this beautiful black Chevy. Well, this is what they call a stock vehicle, it means that very uh, hardly any changes have occurred since it was uh, originally built. And th th that means that it has a radio in it, which is the vacuum tube. Uh, beautiful. And the wipers are also vacuum. So. Where you can only pick up uh, <laughs> static and uh, baseball games. On the radio, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you can get one or two AM stations perfect, on it perfect. with the antenna. And on the wipers, you know, when you travel, and the wipers sort of work incompatible with the accelerator. The accelerator. You, you so. step on the accelerator, and, and the wipers stop. And so, then when you step off of it, they go again. Right. Is, do, you, do you have, is it stick or an automatic? This is a three-speed. Three-speed, automatic. Our, right. And the what they call the stove bolt six the inline six that was the workhorse of the chevy engines during that period of time and in the, this particular model they worked to tweak it originally it was 90 horsepower and they did some uh made some very, uh, modifications to it so in the 51 the engine was supposed to give you 92 horsepower aha uh -huh. well that is some tweaking by uh not by today's standards but a very nice and you, you've had it for how long? I've owned it for 12 years. I'm the fourth owner. Wonderful. And it has a, currently 46,000 original miles on it. So did you have to do much restoration work on it yourself? No, I did not. Uh, I did very little. One of the things I, I missed was a, a side view mirror. And with the chrome on this particular vehicle, it was very difficult to put a, a mirror on. And I was able to attain, took two years on the internet to find a, a spotlight for a 51 Chevy that needed work. I had it re-chromed, but it was a spotlight that had a mirror. So now Perfect I solved that match. problem. Perfect it's, it's almost like a champagne glass of some sort, isn't it? It's a yeah. beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a great car, uh, matter of fact, uh, my dad, uh, we came to Wisconsin when I was uh, five years old, and a gray example of this car was the car that we came came here in uh, with uh, three kids in the back seat. Sure. <laughs> when, when I've taken this car to various shows, there is three comments that I've received <laughs> over and over. One is that my parents owned one, uh -huh. I learned to drive on <laughs> one, or it was my first car. Yeah, um, or... Um, I, I, I first learned about girls in a car like this. <laughs> That's true. The seats are very That's the fourth thing. Thank you. <laughs>
get a hold of the Lions Club and per, and maybe interested in uh, joining so they can contribute uh, and have the uh, social interaction that you folks enjoy. Uh, what would be the best way to go about that? Well, as one well is contact any Lion member that they know and, and who will bring them as a guest to them. The other, if they're, they're unsure, they can send a note to P.O. Box 79, Sister Bay. Five four two three four. That's our Lion Post Office box. Uh, I might add that not all of our events are, are fundraisers. Now our next event coming up will be the Halloween event, and that's uh, where all the youth in the community are invited to the fire station. And there there'll be a costume parade, and each of them will receive a silver dollar that participates in. And then we set up a number of carnival-type games where they earn tickets for their participation and then they go into a prize room where they turn they turn in the tickets for their prizes so, and take home. So well thought out supervised fun here here in the community and, again. And, and again that is of no cost to anyone uh, because that we are able to do it with the funds that we'll make today. So early in this conversation you had mentioned about uh, that uh, you're a transplant and I think um, I think the whole county benefits not only from the natural resources and the great quality of the, the, the people who are native here, but by what you're describing as transplants, uh, uh, you folks basically have had um, deep, rich lives previously and you're bringing to the plate, to the table, uh, your abilities, your backgrounds that uh, that further and uniquely and in, in your experiences that enhance the lives of, of all the natives and all of us who have chosen to live here. That's true. And then I guess it's a melting pot of, of, a, of a current melting pot and, and all those different perspectives and backgrounds come together and then we'll form a new organization that goes out to uh, do work to, to enhance others. And, Excellent. Yeah. Um, some of the other little programs we're involved, this year we took over a bicycle program and for the international students that come here, uh, this had been operated by oh. the Baptist Church and now the Lions took it over for the first year and we have a barn in which we have about 150 bikes and so these international students then come and we provide them with a bicycle for their a form of transportation while they're working here during whatever period of time during the warmer weather months. Then we'll collect the bikes back now. We start getting them back as they've been leaving. We'll work, uh, rehab them and get them all set and have them all ready to go next year. So the international students uh, have a, a warm family helping them out with the transportation. The the uh, the businesses of the area benefit mm -hmm. because they've got uh, dependable uh, transportation for the for the students to work there, and all the uh, all the patrons of the businesses uh, benefit because uh, they have a, a smiley face that got to work uh, on good transportation that morning. Yes, they have. <laughs> We're here with the uh, quintessential Door County band uh, that we see everywhere, and uh, all sorts of crowds and groups of people enjoy this band. They're uh, multifaceted, they play all sorts of joyous genre of music. And we're here with the drummer and one of the vocalists and uh, the, a, a contributor to many types of music here in Door County. And your name, sir? My name is Pat Judy. Yes, it is. And uh, did your, uh, are you happy with that name, Pat? Well, yes. Yes, indeed. And how would you describe Big Mouth? Big Mouth is some is a band that this doesn't come along every day. This band started next uh, St. Patrick's Day. We'll be celebrating our 20th anniversary. Wonderful! And uh, how did you guys get together? It was a one-night 
pickup job for a St. Patrick's Day party at the Nautical Inn. Marvelous, and we're all benefiting from that serendipitous moment. Well, you know, Che and Paul and I had played together in another band called the Amnesians, and we were still playing in that band when we got Woody together with us, and it just clicked. It just started to happen, and pretty soon it got bigger than all the other stuff we were doing, and we were playing five, six, seven nights a week. Now you're playing like 10 nights a week. Well, if there were 10, we'd probably do it. Yeah, you guys have longevity, power, great musicality, great versatility, and you make the crowd damn happy, Pat. Well, we, we really enjoy doing what we're doing, and when I get things thrown at me like these guys are throwing at me, they're Jay's throwing corn at me, so, you know, that, that's just because they love me, you know. It's, it's just a matter of feeding your soul, my friend. It's a matter, it's, I thought it was manna for a moment. Well, it's, it's, it, it is what it is. This is, this is the, the penultimate, this is the end of the season, basically, here at, at Fall Fest, and we've been doing this here in front of, well, it was Johnny G's, and then it was Door Deli, and now it's DC Deli, and we've been playing down here for, Oh, 10, 12 years, and uh, it's it's just, we do it because we love it, and, and people are always here. It doesn't matter whether it's raining or shining, there people are standing here listening to us. Well, we all love you, and everyone I talk to, and at, at all venues that we've seen you, people are enraptured with your music. Just thank you very much from all of us, Pat. We're here with another member of the band who also supplies grain as projectile objects, probably Probably uh, in uh, corresponds to this being a harvest fest. And your name, sir? Paul Sawinski. Hi, Paul, and you're the bass player for this great group. That's correct, yes. And have you been with it since its inception? Yes, it um, incepted in my basement about 20-some years ago, I believe. So you're not a garage band? No, a basement, uh, basement band. Basement band, yes. And how did it start? You, uh, he mentioned, Pat mentioned about a... Uh, a St. Patty's Day party and you all came together. Right. Uh, you know, that was a long time ago. Um, I'll do the best I can. It was a um, party. I think it was at the Nautical Inn. It was a one-nighter. We all called each other and said, we need to do this and, you know, money's okay. Let's, let's do it. And people liked it enough that they kept hiring us back and back. And it grew and we started spreading out and playing more and more. And here we are, 20 some years later. It's, it's so. So, what factors do you uh, would you suggest uh, contribute to the longevity and popularity of your band? I guess uh, utmost would be friendship and um, a common denominator. Also, would be our taste in music. That that's very similar between the four of us. And um, quite frankly, we've we've it became a family. You know, we've had a lot of ups and downs. There have been births and deaths and good times, bad times, just like any other family. And it's, it's, well, it's that, molded into that. And uh, the audience, uh, I being one, certainly uh, feels, uh, has a, ha, feels a connection with your band when you're there and, and senses the connection and pride that you all have in doing what you're doing. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. And uh, your name, sir? Forrest, Woody Mankowski. <laughs> Woody, we have uh, seen you play many times. You're a versatile musician and a great vocalist. Uh, would you? Would your mother describe you in the same way? Uh, she probably would, yes. What other things might she add to the commentary about you? <laughs> um, she usually says that she likes me to sing certain songs like Georgia On My Mind. And yeah. she's, she's got her favorites. Yeah. So how did you start in music, not not uh, Big Mouth, but in music generally? Was it a family uh, uh, no. affiliation? No, I just uh, decided I liked the way the saxophone sounded and looked, so I started. You you, you play a lusty sax, and oh, and your and your voice, uh, you, you can project uh, such a soulful feeling about from your voice. Uh, and you're I originally you're originally from Kiwani or Algoma? Uh, Menominee, Wisconsin. Menominee. So uh, I can see the connection. Uh, soulful Menominee. The, <laughs> most most of us think that, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, what what do you think the uh, key factors to the cohesion of your band are? Well, just 
our friendships that we've formed over the years. It's just, see, look, they're making, they're mocking me right now. <laughs> they're they're implying that you're corny, Woody, uh, yes. as opposed to Woody <laughs> corny. Uh, and so after this gig, what are you guys going to do together? Um, I have to play another gig. No kidding. Tonight, yes. How, how do you have the energy? Because you really give a uh, 110% when you're out there. I, I mean, where do you date? Where do you get that energy from? The love of the music, or? Yeah, I don't know. It's not really energy for me. <laughs> I, I just kind of pace myself. Well, uh, we we all are loving what you guys are doing, and and uh, there is a troublemaker to your left, but. Maybe he can't help it, huh? What do, you, yeah. do we forget because Something he just can't help himself? Very wrong with this. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you very much. Yeah. We're with another one of the great Big Mouth Band members. Your name, sir? Jay. Jay, and uh, he's known to his uh, mother as Jay as well. And he gives a real kind of a salty, smoky flavor to this music. A real experiential delight a smorgasbord of sounds jay um how what contribution uh do you make to this band besides the spirit and and uh voice and guitar you should be getting this stuff <laughs> um, i'm sorry i um i don't know i i think it's just uh the collection of everybody together was kind of magic when we first started this and you, you get that <laughs> You get that with uh, with Woody and with Pat and, and with Paul. It just kind of clicked. Everything got together, and it just kind of goes from there. You don't you don't have any really control over it. You just let it. Neat, neat way to explain it. it. It's an energy. It's it's a synergy between all the players right. that builds into a greater thing than the, all the parts. Is oh, yeah. that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Uh, when I've seen you guys play, uh, you're your expression of love for each other and the energy that you give out to the audience is a wonderful, warm thing. We we just all want to thank you for that. It is more than gas. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's, it's, it's so fun. Keep doing yeah. what you're doing. All right. We're all loving it. Thanks all right. a lot, man. Thank you.
tune by? Smokey Robinson. It's all like you for me, mortar. Who burn me? Wake up, Paul. Wake up, Paul. I got sunshine on a cloudy day. When it gets cold outside, I've got the month for me. Well, I guess you say what can make me feel this way. Dance on by. He's a little higher. Dream. 